In today's video, I'm going to talk about what rate of return you should expect in your life insurance retirement plan. Hey folks, I'm David McKnight, best-selling author of The Power of Zero. I wrote another book called Look Before You Lerp, in which I extol the virtues of a particular type of LIRP called Index Universal Life or IUL. I dedicate a full chapter of that book uh, describing how the IUL can provide you with safe and productive growth. So how do insurance companies deliver safe and productive growth? They accomplish it by utilizing a strategy that calls for bonds and options. It works a little like this. Let's say you make an annual contribution of $10,000 to your IUL. The insurance company takes your $10,000 and they subtract the cost of an option, say $400 on a stock market index, typically the S&P 500. They then invest your remaining $9,600 in a bond that earns enough over the course of a year's time to get you back to $10,000. In this example, that bond would need to grow 4.2%. So at the end of one year's time, your $9,600 investment is once again worth $10,000. By utilizing this bond strategy, companies can pay for the cost of the option on the stock market index while at the same time guaranteeing against market loss. So that explains safe, but how about productive? Remember, that option the insurance company bought for $400, that option allows you to participate in the growth of that S&P 500 index up to a cap. In this case, we'll say 11%. If the index goes up 20%, you keep the first 11%. If it goes up 10%, you capture the full 10%. If the index goes down 20%, the company simply lets the option expire unexercised. No harm, no foul. And that, in a nutshell, is how insurance companies deliver both safe and productive. Chances are, if you've investigated IULs for very long, you've heard reports of some pretty crazy return, rates of return. You may even have heard of so-called uncapped indexes that deliver 20 or even 30% returns in a given year. All that without taking any more risk than what you're accustomed to taking in your savings account. The question is, are these types of returns realistic and sustainable over a long period of time? Or should we be tempering our expectations when it comes to these types of policies? According to industry expert Charlie Gipple, we should be more realistic when it comes to average rates of returns in products such as index universal life and fixed index annuities. To expect huge returns over time, Gipple explains, is to go, quote, against basic economics. If a carrier is able to take a call option budget equal to, say, 4% of the entire premium and turn that 4% into a 12% return over a year, it is unsustainable. That is a 200% return on our call option budget. If many of the very smart people on Wall Street believe that the carrier's call option strategies would consistently deliver 200% returns, they would swarm to those call options themselves and bid the prices up so high that the ultimate return on that call option strategy would be nowhere near 200%. Markets may not always be efficient, but I can guarantee that they are efficient enough to not allow 200% returns for very long, close quote. So if consistent 12% returns in these types of programs aren't realistic, what are? Gipple continues, quote, the carrier may not always get a 200% risk premium, but an additional one, two, or 3% to pass through to the clients on top of the original 4% call option budget would be nice, close quote. In other words, while you may get the occasional 12% return or higher in your index universal life policy, a better rule of thumb is to take the risk premium, say 4%, and add one to 3% on top. In other words, that's five to 7% on average over time. I think six and a half percent is probably a reasonable rate of return to expect. Now you may be thinking, Dave, I can do much better than six and a half percent in my stock market portfolio. Why would I take money out of my stock market portfolio where I might earn anywhere from eight to 10% and contribute it to index universal life that can only deliver six and a half percent? Well, you have to remember that the IUL is not designed to replace the stock market portion of your portfolio. It should be viewed as an alternative to the bond portion of your portfolio. If you were to simply reach into your retirement account, replace your bonds with IUL, you would increase your overall return, reduce your risk, and reduce the standard deviation of your entire portfolio. That means that your money lasts longer in retirement and you dramatically reduce the risk of running out of money before you run out of life. 
If you need any help incorporating IUL into a balanced, comprehensive approach to tax-free retirement, head on over to DaveMcKnight.com. I'm happy to lend a hand. And if you have any comments or questions, drop them into the comments section below. I respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.